All right, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to factor quadratics that have a coefficient of greater than 1 for a. So remember, a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now let's just review. So if you have x squared plus, let's say, I don't know, we'll do an easy one, 8x plus 15. You know, the way you factor this, you go what um, plus what equals b. You know, so b here is 8 and what times what equals c, which is 15. So, you know, they have to be the same number, so it's going to be 3 and 5. 3 plus 5 equals 8, 3 times 5 equals 15. So in this case, you would have x plus 3 um, times x plus 5. Okay, now you're gonna, you may see these as an equation. It might be equal to 0 like this. You can solve it, blah, 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 blah. Your solutions here would what makes this equal to 0 you might get, in this case, it would be x equals negative 3 and negative 5, because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So anyway, that's, you know, that's to give you a general idea of what's going on here with my awesome uh, things here, my awesome graphs that are pretty bad. Let's, let's, let's be honest here, Richard. Okay. Um, you know, negative 3 and negative 5, okay, you know, this this parabola is going to look something like this. I mean, I'm sketching it. I don't know exactly. But it crosses at negative 3 and negative 5. Okay, so anyway, the question becomes then, what happens when you see one, you know, that's a, that's a little more difficult? So let, let's do one like this. Like, let's say 6x squared um, plus 11x minus 10. Now, you know, you look to see if you can factor anything out here, and you can't. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a different method here. Okay, you can do what's called splitting the middle term, which is a totally valid way, but I'm going to do what's called, I, guess, I think it's called a box method. I don't know why, because I'm drawing a box. Um, you know, this is a way of foiling as well. So anyway, what you do here is you just write the first term here, and you write the last term here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do 6 times negative 10, which is negative 60. Now, I want to get two factors that are going to add up to b here, okay? So, you know, for 60, I what? I got 6 and 10. I got 4 and 15. Okay, so it's going to be 4 and 15. So, you know, you just kind of have to go through them to, to get the right combination. It's going to, one of them has to be negative. So, let's see, it's going to be negative 4 times 15. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just write negative 4x and 15x. If you write them the other way around, you know, like negative 4x here and 15x there, it's no worries. No big deal. Uh, it all works out the same. Okay, so you're almost done. All you have to do now is factor this out. So what we do, look at this term and look at this term and see what they have in common. Okay, I can take out a 2x. Now, if I take out a 2x of here, what do I have left? Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. You know, x squared divided by x is, is x, okay? So if you did this 6x, 3x times 2x, you get 6x squared. And then here, if I take out a 2x, I have a negative 2. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x, okay? So I'm factoring these out. Okay, now look at this. 3x times what equals 15? Uh, well, it's 5, okay? And then what you do is you did the last term, you should be done by now, so you just check. Is negative 2 times 5 negative 10? And it's like, boom, yeah, you're good. Okay, so what this would be would be 3x minus 2, and then 2x plus 5. You are done. All right, so that's what you, that's factoring with, you know, um, a middle term, or excuse me, a when it's greater than 1. So it gets a little, you know, it's not bad. I mean, um, you just have to go through a little more of a process. Let's do one more just to make sure everything's cool. So we'll move it back up here, and... Uh, let me switch pens here, and we're going to do, let's see, oh. okay, so for this one, let's see what we got here. We have, all right, so 10x squared uh, minus 21x minus 10. All righty. Okay, can we factor anything out of there? No. <clears throat> so when you see that, you immediately draw your box. My boxes are not getting better. This is unfortunate. Okay, and if you watch any of my other videos, you know I cannot draw anything. I'm horrible. Anyway,
Mm, say la vie. Okay, so you put 10x squared here, you put negative 10 here. Let's multiply 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. Now we need to come up with two factors that multiply to equal uh, negative 100 and add to equal negative 21. Okay, well, what do we got? You know, 5 times 20, uh, no, 4 times 5, ooh, okay, there we go. 4 times 5 is going to work. Okay, so we want it to be negative, so it's going to be negative 25 and 4. Okay, so we'll just put negative 25 here, and, oops, x, don't forget your x's, and 4x. So, now we factor. Okay, uh, I'll switch up the colors here. Okay, so let's look, what do 10x squared and negative uh, 5x have in common? Well, they have a 5x. If we take out 5x, we have 2x here, so it's 2x times 5x is 10x squared. And then we took out a 5x here, so it's going to be negative 5. Now you just check, negative 5 times 5x is negative 25x. Okay, so we're good there. And then 2x times what equals 4x? Well, that's 2. And then check, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Okay, so we're good. Now, they're not all going to equal negative 10. I just happen to make these the same way. So uh, we have 5x plus 2 and 2x minus 5. So, anyway, um, there you go. That's factoring when you have a coefficient greater than 1 for A. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, I'll be happy to show you the other way if you want. I like this way personally. The other way is called splitting the middle term. I mean, we're splitting the middle term here as well, but we, it's, I think it's easier when you do it with a box. Um, so, hope this helps you out. Uh, take care. Have a good one.